Welcome to the Between Two Wheels podcast, where we talk about all things on and between two wheels. I'm your host, Johnny Roebuck, and y'all know my co-host, Uncle, I wish I was as pretty as Tracy Ken. <laughs> this episode is being brought to you by Get Lowered Cycles, your source for all the parts and gear you need for your Harley. Today, we are talking scooters, those pesky little bastards showing up everywhere in every major city and even some small towns. Before we get this kicked off, though, I have a little bit of administrative stuff to go over. First, I'd like to say thank you to all that have donated to Project Clean Slate and entering for their chance to win a set of Advan Black Stretch Saddlebags. If you'd like a chance to win, head over to BetweenTwoWheels.com. The two is spelled out T-W-O. Click on the Project Clean Slate link and donate $20 for each chance to win. If we get over 200 donations, we will go ahead and kick off the drawing. For those that have donated and not received their tax receipt, you will receive it before January 1st. I apologize for being slow on this. Uh, For the patrons that I have not reached out to about your shirts, be on the lookout for a message coming from me this week. And for Mark. Hi, Mark. Dude, I apologize for not getting your shirt out to you. I have it. And now that I am home and no longer traveling, I have already gotten it sent out to you. So by hopefully by the time you hear this, it will arrive within a day or two. Okay. Did you dogify it? Like let your dogs lay on it? Oh, yeah. No, totally. Dry, I, off, dry off with it after well, a shower. So he wears a size small. Well, yeah. So I wrapped Pero and Xena <laughs> both in it. Oh, it was great. <laughs> and he wore black, so have fun with that one, Mark. So how's it how's it going, man? It's been forever. Fuck. It's been busy. Yeah? Yeah. Ups and downs. All arounds. No ins and outs? Uh, a little bit of that. A little <laughs> bit of that. Sometimes good, sometimes bad. <laughs> but no, no, I've been gone. Got my daughter. Had some family issues, so got my daughter moved in. Cool. Uh, back in school and gonna gonna make sure she fucking graduates oh, there you go that's my that's the only rule i really give her yeah i mean graduate two rules tell me where you're at and you're gonna fucking graduate high school <laughs> one way or another you're gonna fucking graduate high school <laughs> so back when my niece was considering moving in with me and tracy we had we had to set up some ground rules for yeah. her and i was like well here's the rule if you're gonna drink drink inside the house or in the backyard or something yep don't be stupid and get caught Mm -hmm. yeah if you're going to do any type of drugs it better only be weed and if it's some good shit you better share goddamn right and don't get pregnant oh yeah yeah that's a big one and then graduate yeah you know for zach everything was the same except for instead of him getting pregnant i told him don't don't get get anyone pregnant don't get any girls pregnant yeah so uh, it's pretty simple rules i guess i mean uh, really mine are the same like I mean, that, I, I that's, pay that's people. Really it. So Zachary, he got me on the really on the point of not having him mow the yard because he <laughs> did such a shitty job. I mean, hey, you know, you know how that works, oh, man. I, I do. mean, you in the I Navy, do. like if you do a bad job of it, somebody will come do and it do for it for you. you. Yeah. So the there's no real chores. Clean your own dishes. Keep your door shut so I don't have to look at your pigsty. It's easy. Yeah. Yeah. I'm the best uh, uncle ever. I, I'm, I don't have a lot of like crazy rules. I mean, that's, that's pretty much it. Yeah. I mean, if we run out of something, let me know. <laughs> if you or need, go to the store and get some yeah, more. Or, or go get it. Yeah. And I'll, <laughs> I'll pay you back for just whatever, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you, and of course she's, she's 18. She's like, you're an adult. You need yeah. kind of act like one. Yeah. Start adulting. Yeah. So, before our listeners shut off their subscriptions to our podcast, because we're talking about scooters... Hey, between two wheels, man. Hear us out. And this episode is my fault. So, I want to give a little bit of backstory as to why it's been like this. So, the OGs, we hopped on some scooters a couple months back uh, in downtown San Antonio and had a blast. Yeah. (laughs) I, I tell you... There's probably a few thousand of these scooters in San Francisco. Oh, there's probably that many here. And they're all over the place. And they ride them just like they ride motorcycles. They split lanes. They give no fucks. I mean, that's what we did. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> but, but yeah, I mean, 
it's in, it's insane in San Francisco. It, it makes sense in, in densely populated areas where driving is not ideal. Yeah, these are ideal. Oh yeah, I mean in San Francisco, parking can be anywhere from twenty to fifty dollars a day. Yeah, see for that a car fucking just blows my mind. Oh, well, there's no space. Well, yeah, I, I heard a joke. This was years ago. Is a you know some you know rich motherfucker in New York. He used to park in this one spot and get his car towed because it was cheaper to have his car towed and stored while he was out of the country by the tow company than it was to pay for parking and storage of his own. <laughs> That's kind of brilliant. I mean, hey, if it works, it works, you know. Yeah. It's in a secure lot. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> we all have heard the old adage, and if you haven't, you're about to. Scooters are like big girls. They're fun to ride, but you wouldn't want your friends to find out. Well, in the age of us millennials, there's nothing wrong with big girls, and nope. there's nothing wrong with scooters. Uh, by the way, special shout out to Miss Mia Fit. That's M I S S M I A F I T on Instagram. She's a perfect example of big girls being great. I gotta, I gotta look her up. Yeah, she's awesome. Anyways. Some info that I think is important to know about why scooters are appearing everywhere. So, why are we seeing all these damn scooters? You can literally blame Lyft and Uber for this. Because of the popularity of these two ride-sharing technology companies, New Silicon Valley startups start trying out other forms of mobility. The industry itself is literally called micro-mobility. Mm -hmm. Micro mobility. Yeah. Which, which one is she? The top one. Um, <laughs> it's it's insane, but oh, hey. it's the same technology and business practices that Lyft and Uber use. In fact, one of the biggest scooter firms, Bird, was founded by a former executive of both Lyft and Uber. So they're sharing this technology. They know that people need mobility options. This is just a much easier way of actually having assets. That's not just your technology. Assets. That's what I'm looking at right now. <laughs> we, oh, yeah. I'll come back to the show. My bad. Yeah, no problem. Um, so, why so many? You can blame Bird for this as they launched the Bird platform in November of 2018, which allows other firms, what they call operators, to use their technology to run their own fleet of scooters. Oh, and by the way, in July of this year, Bird was valued at $2.5 billion. Jesus Christ. Has it really only been a year? Uh, they've actually been open for two years. But they they have their own platform. They got all the quirks worked out of it, and then they opened it up to lease it out to so other people. So they licensed it out oh, to yeah. other oh, okay. That's fucking smart. Yeah. And it's it's so much easier just to license software than try to go and build your own. Well, yeah. You have to have an army of developers yeah. going out and doing all the coding and shit. And that's a lot of time. You have to pretty much go to India if you want to be able to get it ramped up quickly. Oh, yeah. I mean, if it's already done for you and you can, you know, pay to use it. Yeah. And you're still making a hell of a profit. Well, sure. Yeah. So, wherever there's a shitload of money, there will be a following. Oh, of course. So, right now, there are uh, five really popular uh, scooter hawkers, as I'm calling them. Uh, that you may see here in the United States. Bird, Lime, Wind, Skip, and Spin. But chances are, the last three I mentioned will be bought up by Bird or Lime. Yeah, I haven't heard of those last three. So Spin, Skip, Lime, and Bird are huge in San Francisco, California, West Coast. Um, spin and Skip are getting bigger on the East Coast now, from what I've read. Yeah. All I've seen is Bird, Lime, Lyft has theirs out now, and Uber has theirs out now. Yeah. Those are the ones I see in San Antonio. Okay. I haven't I haven't seen the Uber or Lyft ones in San Antonio yet. Yeah, I saw those when we went to Pride this year. Okay. So, there's a little bit of information as to why our cities have been overrun by these damn fun-to-ride little bastards. 
Now, for consumers like us, which ones would we get for ourselves? Now, I broke this up into three categories. The stand-up scooters, the sit-down scooters, and then just overall. Now, for the sit-down ones, it's, it can be like the little rental ones we see on the streets, or it could be the old school Vespas or Hondas, whatever, as long as it is classified as a scooter. So when when you told me the show notes were up, like you, you told me, you know, what we were going to do. And I was like, okay, we'll fucking do that. And then I looked at the show notes and I, then I started doing my own research. Oh, and holy fuck, there's a lot of scooters out there. Oh, yeah. From obviously your basic, you know, kids razor yeah. battery powered one goes like five miles an hour. To some of the ones we're going to talk about. Yeah. It's insane. It blew my mind. <laughs> and But think about it. These are still cheaper than a car. You don't pay for parking them. Right. And they're electric or they have really tiny gas tanks. Yeah. So. Getting, you know, 100 miles to a freaking gallon. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to kick this off with the stand-up scooters. I picked the Dualtron Thunder by mini motors 50 mile per hour capability this this is where i started to like because i read yours and i was like what the fuck <laughs> um legally they're only limited to 15 miles per hour however that can be fixed there is a wire that is connecting something to the motor that limits it if you take off that wire it's no longer limited but all of the websites say we strongly suggest not tampering with this. Now it has something to do with insurance and DOT, yeah. but I don't know. See, I don't, I don't, I don't see how. I mean, I could see that being. I can't even see that being a liability issue. I think it might be insurance for them. I mean, yeah, it has Product to be liability. Yeah, it yeah. has to be because you don't insure these. They're not motor vehicles. No, I mean it would fall under <laughs> your homeowner's insurance. Well, fuck, not even then. No, it'd just be. Yeah, that, there's nothing. Yeah. You just get sued. Yeah. If you get caught. You were right. <laughs> but uh, the range of the battery is 75 miles. This is, of course, dependent on the weight of the rider and at, at how much throttle you're how giving you're riding, this little yeah. bastard. Um, it has a 35 amp hour battery, ABS disc brakes. That's impressive. And my big downfall of this one, I have to lose five pounds to be able to ride it. It has a 265 pound capability. Now, I'm sure the ones that we were riding, oh, they were have probably like 150 pound capability. Yeah, I think they have a 200 pound limit. Yeah, we blew that. I'm thing well out over of that. Yeah. <laughs> um, but so this one's not man size; it's still teenage boy size. But it's only three thousand seven hundred ninety dollars to go 50 miles an hour to do 50 miles an hour 75 miles come on there's nobody out there that can tell me they don't want to ride that thing oh yeah uh check these ones out uh this is not an affiliate link or anything like that it's just to give you guys uh pictures and all that jazz it's www.minimotorsusa.com i have links to these in the show notes so if you go to between two wheels.com to spell out two forward slash ep57 you'll be able to get to the show notes damn episode 57 yeah 57 wow. it's crazy right yeah all right ken let's hear about yours <laughs> all right so after i realized that there are like big boy scooters out there yeah it wasn't hard to find them just fucking type in adult scooters and you'll find pages and pages of stuff so that was the hard part so finally i just picked one so I came across the the Nan Robot D4 Plus powerful electric scooter. Okay, this sounds like it's Chineseium. Most of mine that I found were Chinese. Okay. Uh, so this one has a speed of 45 to 55 miles an hour, and it didn't say anything about any restrictions on that they had on their page. And I, I didn't dig deep into all their products. Mm -hmm. I just picked like the fastest one, <laughs> the, the best looking one. Yeah. And. So this one, like I said, 45 to 55 miles an hour has a 40 to 43 mile range. I mean, that's pretty damn far on a scooter. Yeah. I mean, standing up, standing up, going through traffic. That's a long way. It's got a 38 amp hour battery, about the same as yours. 
Yeah, it was 35. So this one has 11-inch pneumatic tires. Pneumatic tires? Well, air tires. Oh, okay, okay. So you have to put air in them. Okay. But they're big. I mean, they're 11 inches. They're like go-kart tires. Yeah. <laughs> so it's it's really kind of an off-road. Oh, wow. So, yeah, take a look at it. It's kind of an off-road, off-road one. It has two... 1800 watt motors Ooh, one in each wheel yes insane and it has a 330 pound capacity nice so i'm set yeah so it's off-road capable of course it's got disc brakes it's got the it's got front and rear suspension mm -hmm. I've, I've never seen scooters like this before <laughs> and it comes in at 31.99 3200 dollars. Nice. yes yeah. okay so the link for this one is nan n-a-n -N, robot nan robot Com. And they have a whole line of them. Yeah. I just picked the coolest one. <laughs> um, okay. So when you're thinking about these, you know, we, we were kind of, when we were riding in downtown, some dude was like doing tricks and shit on these things. Oh, yeah. He and, was acting a complete fool. Oh, yeah. Totally. But, I mean, like I was doing ollies or whatever you call it when you lift both of them up. And oh, yeah. Hop and, little bunny hops. Yeah. And doing little burnouts and... <laughs> Skidding. Skid stops. And <laughs> I mean, they were fun. But those are, like, stupid limited. Oh, yeah. Think I what mean, you could do with that kind of power. I mean, those, we were only going, like, 10, 15 miles an hour on those yeah. tops. tops. With downhill with the tailwind. <laughs> but, yeah. It's, but I couldn't it's imagine. Crazy. I mean, as fast as, 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 as the feeling was on those, and you're going 10 miles an hour, you know, cruising through traffic, I couldn't imagine... Adding on another 30 miles an hour and hauling ass, <laughs> splitting cars. Yeah. I mean, you're going 45 miles an hour. That's highway minimum speed right there, most places. Yeah. I mean, you could pretty much, you could go anywhere in town. You could break the speed limit. Yes, absolutely. You could, you could get a speeding <laughs> ticket on your little electric scooter. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and, and the Nanbot, that one has an option for a seat. Okay. It's a okay. separate purchase. Yeah. Huh. Since it's a stand-up, you kept it with a stand-up. Yep. That's fine. Because I found a, a better sit-down one. Okay. Well, let's go into the sit-down ones. All right. So I mine was the Mototech Fat Tire. Okay. It's another off-road looking one. All right. It's It only goes 20 miles per hour. Mm -hmm. All right. So not super fast. But I mean, if you're using your scooter like a, you know, I think most people would just to commute around town, mm -hmm. maybe get from their parking garage to work or whatever, 20 miles an hour, that's fine. So this one has oversized air fuel tires, hydraulic brakes, LED lights, has a key ignition. So you can like fucking park it, take the key out, and it's parked. Now, people can still lift it up and carry it I mean, off, it only weighs like 100 or 150 pounds. So I mean, someone could just pick it up and take it away. But, and it looks freaking awesome. It's got an 18 amp hour lithium battery. Mm -hmm. But I don't see how that's really hurting it. I mean, obviously... Maybe if they'd have packed a bigger battery in there, you get at faster speeds. Possible. But, Especially with that size of a motor that's on it. But, and, and I don't know, maybe they wanted to keep the size down or keep the cost down. Yeah. Uh, it's got a 2,000-watt motor. Just one, though. Yeah. Just one 2,000-watt motor. And it has a 450-pound capacity. Damn. So you could carry a lot of shit on that. Yeah. I mean, a lot. You could almost go two up with that. and You probably could go two up or maybe... I don't know. Maybe they have trailers for them. I don't know. Yeah. But it looks awesome. It's got big ass freaking tires on it. So you could ride for an hour at top speed. Yeah. I mean, and depending on where you work, you know. Yeah. That might not be an issue. Run to the store or whatever. Yeah. Or just fucking have fun on it. Yeah. Because it's 1660 bucks. Okay. It's not so bad. It's, so it's cheaper by almost half. Yeah. Of the stand up. You know, and it's a little smaller. But I don't know. Maybe depending on what you're doing. But it looks fucking cool, though. Yeah. Yeah. So I went with the 2019 HD, not Harley Davidson, but HD electric scooter from Fat Scooters. And they spelled fat wrong. P-H-A-T. Yeah. So this thing has three ride modes based on the terrain you want to ride in. And yes, it can go off-road. But those three modes are... 8 mile per hour, 13 mile per hour, and 20 mile per hour. It has color, uh, custom colored fenders and decks that you can choose. 
Um, it has a 19 amp hour battery, ABS disc brakes, 1500 watt wheel hub motor, and a 440 pound capacity. And it's double your price at 3200. Yeah, I think I think mine's better. I don't know. Maybe. I mean, other than maybe the ABS. Yeah. I, th- I think you're paying quite a bit for the ABS on that. Yeah, maybe. But it looks badass. Yes, it does. I still like mine better, though. <laughs> uh, so yours is, they can, uh, listeners and watchers, viewers, can check out Ken's Mototech fat tire at urbanscooters.com and for the hd electric scooter uh it is at fatscooters.com p-h-a-t so the overall category here and this was kind of just a there's a bunch of different types of scooters oh yeah some people classify mopeds as scooters i have a lot of those popped up yeah so this one was the anything that's classified as a scooter, go for it. Man, there's a lot of Chinese of scooters them. out there. A yeah. lot of them. They're like, oh, this one looks like the Honda such replica. Such brand. Yeah, or Honda replica, Yamaha replica, and they all have replica yeah. at the end of the name so they don't get freaking tagged. <laughs> and some of them are, I mean, you couldn't th- tell the difference. Couldn't tell the difference. Yeah. And it's a full-blown, like it. Like a bagger scooter. Yeah. Like it's got fucking saddlebags on it and the tour pack and windshields and and stereos and I'm like, holy shit. Digital fuck. display. Digital display, <laughs> yeah. Like holy shit. And they're all I mean, I say cheap, but I mean compared to you know, a a new motorcycle mm-hmm. like a Harley or even, you know, a Yamaha or Kawasaki, they're coming in at about half. Yeah. Yeah. What's weird is there's a Chinese company out there that's selling, in essence, an R3 as a scooter. <laughs> but it, it looks like a sport bike. I mean, just like a sport bike. That that's got to be a, it's got to be like a, a legal loophole. Maybe classifying something as a scooter versus a motorcycle. Well, I think because it's only like a 150 cc motor, so I don't know if. You can't have a 150 cc motorcycle, but you can have a 150 cc scooter. See, I don't know. I don't know because the I saw are so weird in, in America. Well, yeah, and I saw a bunch of the scooters. Like you could pick your model, and then you could pick 50, 150, 200, 300 cc engines for that model. Hmm. So interesting. And I know some states, if it's below, you know, a certain number of cc's, you you don't have to have a license to operate it on the street but then of course you know your local ordinances they always fuck with you because it's a motorized vehicle and whatnot yeah all right so let's hear about your overall i think it's funny that with the overall category we both went with old school scooters traditional a traditional yeah gas powered scooter yeah (laughs) so i kind of wanted to stay along the same price lines as my first two so that was kind of my goal okay and I went with the Honda Ruckus. It didn't <laughs> pop up as the Honda Ruckus when I first typed in to Google what I was looking for. It came up as the Honda Zoomer. I didn't realize that the Zoomer... The top search result. Well, thank you, Google. I appreciate that. Shut your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> so, it came up as the Honda Zoomer. Well, apparently, the Honda Zoomer is the Honda Ruckus. And I guess that's for the overseas market. Okay. So, Honda Ruckus, one of the most common Honda scooters around. 100 or 49cc engine. Mm-hmm. So, in a lot of places, you don't need a license to operate this thing. Uh, liquid cooled single cylinder four stroke, electric start. It's got a only it's only got a 1.3 gallon gas tank, but the but the miles per gallon it's 114 miles per gallon (laughs) so you're getting oh what 150 175 miles per tank ish i mean yeah so and then there's tons and tons and tons of aftermarket parts you can do anything you want 
to a Honda Ruckus. They have big bore kits. You can stretch it out. You can put fat tires on it. All, you know, lights and all sorts of shit. Moto Nasi did a build series. On oh, these. yeah, he did. And, and he, he put the big bore kit on there. and It looked cool when he was done. I still, I, at the time, I couldn't see myself riding it. Oh, I could, I could. However. I couldn't see myself getting one and like stretching it and. Yeah, putting a boatload of money in. Well, he didn't pay well, for yeah. any of that shit probably, but. But I mean, I could totally see myself having one of these. Yeah. I mean, you could throw it in the back of the truck and just go. Yeah, totally. So, and it comes in at 2750 and you can find that at powersports.honda.com. And they're everywhere. And you could find them way cheaper, you know, on say like Rumble On or. Yeah any other secondhand site yeah but it's a, it's a classic scooter and it's simple yeah i mean and even even at 49 cc's i think it still easily does 45 miles an hour i think that's like its top speed mm. but but i mean yeah it's it's a pretty cool scooter and and i would have one <laughs> <laughs> so i went super old school to the original scooters uh, made by the amazing Italian brand Vespa. I went with the GTS Super 300. I don't even know. Naughty, Nata, Nate. It's N O T T E. It's Na- Italian. Naughty. Naughty. <laughs> so this thing is an all black design and it is darker than the Indian Roadmaster. It's like, it's dark like horse. murdered out. Yeah. I think there's one piece of shiny thing on it, and that was tucked in underneath the uh, the back side of the uh, the rider seat down below, like uh, like even, a stator or something. Didn't even notice it. Yeah, it's so an engine part. That yeah, just yeah, yeah. They that they didn't black out. Uh, it has a 2.2 gallon gas tank. It has 21.2 horsepower at 7,750 RPM over 140 mile range top speed in the 75 or 70 mile per hour range now this can kind of deals with weight of the rider oh, yeah and the balls of the rider true um but it's a, the reason i went with this one is because it's got the classic vespa style well i mean but v- it's, vespas are iconic yeah and it's all teched out i mean digital everything it has in the glove box a place for a USB drive or USB port to plug in your phone. That's nice. You can get the aftermarket stereo or the optional stereo. Oh. So you can blast out music. Now, funny thing. You get when your five-finger death punch going. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> totally. Um, but when I was in Asia, in like Singapore and Hong Kong, I saw Vespas everywhere. Well, that's what you were saying is the scooter mafia is oh, like huge. hard over there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, thing is, it's a Vespa and it is imported from Italy, so you're paying for it. It's you're paying the import 70, taxes on that seventy three hundred dollars. But it's a Vespa though. It's a Vespa. I mean, that's a like I said, that's an iconic scooter. I mean, you see, any movie you watch that involves going over to Europe, yeah, you're gonna see Vespas. You're gonna see Vespas. Yeah, because they're super cheap. Oh well, yeah, and well, especially over there. Yeah, but ah. Uh, and I've I've ridden Vespas before when I was in Europe. They're a blast. There was a uh, when I when I was about when I was still bouncing here. One of the owners of the bar that I worked at, she owned a Vespa, and that was her her daily driver. Yeah. Yep. I mean, it's a scooter and it and it moves. It'll get you there. Yeah. Won't necessarily get you there fast, but I mean, look at, at being able to go roughly seventy miles an hour. You're just not getting on the highway. Right. I mean, I mean, I guess you, you could for a short stint, you know, if you wanted to like jump traffic or something like that, but I wouldn't in San Antonio. Yeah, no, that would be insane. There'd try. be so much road rage, <laughs> 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 which could be kind of funny, but uh, I don't, I don't know. I, I kind of, I'm thinking about what all is going on with the various scooter companies now that the micro mobility companies are really pushing forward and they actually had an, a lower barrier of entry than um, Uber and Lyft have 
I mean, hell, Uber is still fighting legal battles in in London right now about their license to actually be a taxi, taxi service. Yeah. Well, San Antonio had that issue with with Lyft. Lyft was fighting with San Antonio yeah. for for the same thing because they they're they're a taxi service, but Lyft was saying no, we're not. We're a ride sharing. Well, so service. in California, they passed a bill in the House, and I think the governor signed it, stating that these types of companies, the gig companies, have to make these people employees. And Uber, Lyft, some of these DoorDash, things like that, they're like, yeah. how are they employees? I mean... They work whenever they want for however long they want. It's if they con- want to do one ride, it's contract labor essentially. It is, but and, and each ride is a new contract. Yeah. So I mean, <laughs> it's it, it what it is in in my in the way that I'm thinking about it is, it's the government, uh-huh. city, state, whatever, wanting to get their hand in it so they get their share. Sure, because if all these people turn into employees. Now you have to pay, uh, pay employment taxes yeah, and workers' comp and all this other stuff mm-hmm. that the state can then go and waste yep. and continue their their line of bankruptcy. I'm sorry, Californians. No. It, it's, it's that would so, never, never happen. It's so easy pickings when it comes to Everything? talking trash about California. Yeah. It's not the Californians. It's just the governor, the government y'all elect. That's all. Uh, before we go into our closing argument, did you see that um, <laughs> Eagle Rider? So bringing this back to motorcycles and to Harleys, even though Eagle Rider has expanded their um, their brands that they carry, but they've added membership options. What? Yeah, it's it's insane. So starting for 2020, Eagle Rider is going to have memberships and i think there's going to be two tiers called a uh it's like a pick six or a uh ride 12 or what the two are going to be called and what it is so like the pick six is 200 bucks a month and what it does is it gives you 12 credits per month for six months where ride 12 offers you 12 credits per month for 12 months um but what kills me is the options that you get. So thinking about it, you have to, these credits go towards like days for your riding. So some of these can be something as simple as like a KTM 1290 Super Adventure. You can get it for 14 days in a month you only pay 49.50 each for first you get the first 12 days for free well for the the membership for your membership fee of what 199 yeah and then it's it's in essence 50 bucks for uh, each of the two additional two more days. days so this could be an awesome option for people oh that so that would be the ride 12 package so 249 okay dang that's that's cheap so if you think about you could rent a motorcycle for half a month for 350 bucks yeah so if you tried to go and buy that same bike now you'd have to carry insurance you'd have to care you know pay for the title and all that stuff and you're probably going to pay around five hundred dollars a month for the bike, yeah. Plus the insurance, fifty to a hundred bucks a month. And people up north who don't have the opportunity to ride all the time, oh, yeah. Especially you know they only really get four, maybe five months a year of good riding weather. I mean, this could be the cheaper alternative. Well, yeah. And you're not stuck with one bike. You don't. Have, well, you're not stuck with one bike. You're not doing any maintenance on it. Yep. You know, you're not having to carry your insurance. I mean, I'm sure they have an option to upgrade insurance, et cetera. Yeah. But still, but even like that, like looking at that, the Harley Davidson baggers, two credits a day, 
Yeah. And this is the the, the Triumph Tiger 800 one credit a day. <laughs> I mean, it's, that's, it's nuts. That's awesome. I mean, so for 250 bucks, you could take a Harley, a bagger for six days. Yeah. I mean, that's a week long trip. Or three weekends. Yeah. And then you get 50% off those extra days you pay. Yeah. I mean... That's pretty fucking cool. Yeah. It's it's a great way for people to who have taken the rider course, have their motorcycle license, but they're not sure what type of bike they actually want. Oh, yeah. That's that's a good point. You, you sign up for the pick six, and you go and just every other weekend or so, or a couple weekends a month, go try out different types of bikes. They have... I mean, they have BMW yeah, R1200 the, Ts. They have the R1200 GS. Yeah. So you could you can try out your ADVs. They even have Royal Enfields. So a Yamaha R3, MT07. Yeah. KTM, BMW. I mean, dirt fuck, bikes. So they got all the major brands. Yeah. For the most part. Yeah. And they're all over the place now. In the, That's pretty in the, fucking in the cool. States. So this may be an option. I'm going to put a link to. Uh, to their website. Go check it out. Again, no affiliate or anything like that. I just came across this on rideapart.com. I'm going to put a link to the article I read uh, dealing with this. And I think it's it's such a great idea for people who want to get into riding, but they want to find their style. Okay, that's pretty fucking cool. It says Eagle Rider even offers a Textron Wildcat side-by-side. For two credits a for day. For two credits a day and a flatbed trailer to go with it for one credit a day. So three credits a day and you can rent a side-by-side. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> look for a, like a hunting weekend. That'd be perfect. Like I just, I just went hunting for the weekend. It'd have been great to have a side-by-side. Yeah. I mean, so for the for two days there, eh, it's 250 bucks. Yeah. That's not bad at all. I mean, how much would you have to rent it? it if you were going to a lease, that, a full service lease, what would be the cost to rent a side by side lease? You oh, know, hundred bucks a day, hundred fifty bucks a day. Yeah, if not more. Yeah. Uh, see, it's it's things like this that's that should be encouraging more and more riders to go out and just try something new, or to really find what fits you the best without having to spend. a fuckload of money on something you're not going to be happy with in a, in two or three months. Well, yeah, and it's so like it says on there, it's Harleys, sport bikes, yeah, you know, classics like the Royal Enfield, <laughs> dirt bikes, side by sides. I mean, well, y'all went to that place uh, up in Hidden Falls, and you can rent dirt bikes or was it four wheelers from them? But oh, I wasn't with them. Oh, so Justin knows all about that. Yeah. I've I've looked at them before, and you can rent their equipment and do it all but you're going to spend three hundred dollars just for that one day for one day yeah because you got to pay for parking pay for entry then all that shit so you're going to spend three hundred dollars or more for one day of riding in just their park you can't take it anywhere else right so that that's pretty fucking cool yeah okay so bringing it back around to scooters here's my closing argument Is the micro-mobility industry a good thing for our cities? Yes. Okay. Now, I know a lot of people hate on it because the people who use them can be inconsiderate of the people around them, both pedestrians and vehicle traffic. If you can look past that, I mean, I think it's a great thing. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you pay... 10 bucks to park downtown San Antonio and you can hop on a scooter and go everywhere in downtown for I think would we spend like $12 at night or something like that yeah for like an hour and a half of riding yeah and that was just us like straight riding like we weren't bar hopping or nothing like that so I mean you you hop from one a restaurant to another restaurant or a bar or a club or whatever or even just use it like we did just go around look at everything and yeah people watch and all that and you pay 12 bucks yeah i mean and then if you work down there so and that's the other side of it is the people that work down there you know and if you live down there 
you're not having to drive to work find a car find a, a spot for your car yeah because i i looked at working downtown at some of the bars when i was bouncing but you have to pay 10 bucks every time you go down there to go to work yeah and you don't really want to take the bus yeah, well, yeah. so and and so i've got dv plates on my truck so i can park in a city parking lot for free yeah and they've got what two of them down there three of them down there but then hop on a scooter and get where you need to go exactly i I think it's great yeah now then it just comes down to people being considerate you know you're the way you do it don't be an asshole and fucking knock people off the sidewalk and shit yeah i think i think it's a great thing so in some areas of downtown san francisco they have dedicated areas for like bicycle traffic and these types of vehicles um i think if more cities would adopt that type of uh, situation it would create a more safe environment yeah a healthy a healthier you know business environment yeah but i mean in cities like San Francisco, Chicago, New York City, these these areas, they're used to dealing with the pedestrians. Yes. And a pedestrian can just walk out in front of you at mm. moment's notice, and most of these drivers, they, they're already expecting it's it. It's expected, yes. So I think, like in San Francisco, the drivers don't even bother with the scooters. They, they scooters have free reign. Well, it's... it's it's part of it's part of the their life now it's like the cyclists bicyclists yeah. and there's a ton of bicyclists there you know, in san so, francisco so too. it's it's so in that aspect because it's such a bike friendly place yeah adding the scooters in was it, it doesn't really change anything right the the funniest thing i saw down there was a guy wearing a very expensive suit and he had like an armani leather fucking uh, laptop bag so i knew he had some money he was on one of those things just zipping down the sidewalk i mean hey you know he's not paying for parking right but it's it's easy enough for him to be able to get around well yeah like the company i was doing business at out there they have like 14 buildings in downtown san francisco holy fuck and i have meetings at various buildings so i'd have to jump between different buildings and it could be as short as a five minute walk or it could be as long as a 30 minute walk hop on one of these scooters and it's 10 yeah. minutes tops to that furthest, furthest building di- yeah. yeah i mean and you're not having to wait for you know an uber or a lyft exactly to show up and then being stuck in traffic uh, yeah and on top of that so i mean if as long as the weather's nice or maybe you've got you know some rain gear depending on yeah your job <laughs> it's it's the it's really it's really a a really good solution it is and they're fun they they are they are a blast i mean i have no reason to business wise to to right to deal with that but i mean we went on my wife's birthday and had a fucking blast now your wife's had three birthdays this year <laughs> she's had a few <laughs> she's had a few it's kind of weird it's because she would she she used to not be able to allow to have birthdays because she would nearly die around her birthday okay so the first year she got thrown off a horse and then the next year she got thrown off her motorcycle <laughs> so we decided that she can't have birthdays anymore on her birthday she got to have them elsewhere okay <laughs> safer that way <laughs> well folks this is the last episode of 2019 uh, from our family here at Between Two Wheels to you and yours. Merry Christmas, and we will see you in 2020. Oh, wait. What? What? They should come find us at IMS. Yes. Shit. Yeah. In January. Uh, is it the first Saturday? F- first weekend. Yeah. Uh, we will be in Dallas at the International Motorcycle Show. So, Stay tuned to the Instagram for Between Two Wheels, and we will post up where we're going to be. We'll probably do a uh, after party type of thing somewhere in Deep Ellum, um, kind of like last year. Yeah, and just hang out, have fun. If y'all can make it, please come out. It's an awesome show. See all the new models and motorcycles. On all the custom bikes and 
especially all the custom bikes. Yeah. Motorcycle Missions will probably have at least one oh, bike yeah. out there. Um, so definitely check us out. Um, but yeah, follow the uh, Instagram page for that, and more details will follow. Thanks for reminding me. Yeah, Merry Christmas, fuckers. Thank you for tuning in to Between Two Wheels Podcast. To see the show notes for this and all of our episodes, to find links to our social media and Patreon page where we are raising money for Project Clean Slate, head over to our website at www.betweentwowheels.com. The two is spelled out T-W-O. On behalf of Justin, Uncle Ken, I am Johnny Roblox saying, be yourself unless you're a jerk. Then be someone better. Peace. I, I, I be dead, dude. I like, I like